because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Colin McGuigan for AFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Edward, I haven't actually seen you since uh, that Esquire shoot came out. Was it? Yeah. So well, it turned out right, didn't it? You didn't let us go to it, right? But can you imagine the reaction, right? If Frank Warren is stood in the middle of New York doing that shoot. I mean, no disrespect to Frank Warren, but there are levels, not just levels of promoting, but levels of, you know, je ne sais quoi. And, um, you know, it'd be the same if my old man was standing in the middle of New York. You didn't let me and Parsons shoot. come with you because you said it would be serious. And then we look at it. When you do a shoot like that, you, you do worry about how it's going to come out. I was quite pleased. I think I'm a, I think I'm a 10. Let's get straight into it. I'm going through too much Peter Parsons there. Right, Katie Taylor, homecoming in Ireland. Talk me through this because this is probably the biggest night of Irish boxing to date. Probably the biggest fight of Katie Taylor's career. I think so. I mean, you know, it's, it's amazing how it all worked out. We worked so hard for the Serrano fight. She had a fight against Cruz. It was a very physical fight. We worried about the date. We got in the ring after. We said, how are you? Hands it. Yep, fine, let's announce it. And then just over the next couple of weeks, injuries. And it meant that she couldn't make the date. And we were faced with a decision. We all got on the phone. I said to Katie Taylor and, and Brian, I think we should delay the Serrano fight till July, August, and maybe look at a stadium again. And Katie said, no, I, you know, we've got May 20th free arena. I want to fight. And I said, OK, well, look, who are you thinking? You know, we get a little voluntary defence. And she went, no, I want, I want a big fight. I'm like, OK, well, you know, you've got Alicia Baumgartner, you've got Chantel Cameron, you got, I, want, I want to fight Chantel Cameron. And I'm like, OK, because, you know, a lot of people have said in boxing for a while, oh, she, she won't fight Chantel Cameron. I know she'll fight Chantel Cameron. But still, I don't think, I wouldn't have advised her to fight Chantel Cameron when she wasn't undisputed or didn't have belts because it's a very tough fight. And I always said to Chantel, when you get the undisputed or when you get unified, she will fight you. I don't think Chantel believed me either. Anyway, we finished that conversation. And then I think the next day or two days later, Katie Taylor's put a post out on social media. Could you quite believe that? No. And I was like, you know, Eddie Hearn, make it happen. I'm like, Jesus, how's your pressure? Uh, but none of that really matters. You know, like, I know that promoters and me particularly sometimes get the blame if fights don't happen. Trust me, we want big fights. Like... That's where, one, we create great nights, and two, that's where we make our money. Could we see Serrano next in Crook Park, though? Yeah, but honestly, right now, I just think to myself, you can't even look beyond Chantel Cameron. This could be Katie Taylor's last ever fight in Ireland, or it could be the first of many. But, yeah, of course, we'd love to do a stadium, we'd love to look at Croke Park, but this fight, you know, the book is... Look at the price. You know, it's got Katie Taylor a slight favourite in this fight. Very, very tough fight. But I'll tell you what, it will be fucking unbelievable. The atmosphere, the fight itself. And this is what we're saying, not just about female boxing creating great fights. Female boxing, the best fight and the best. And, you know, every time there's a great fight, the fight itself is a great fight. And, and that's what, you know, you know about this fight. You know when this bell goes. This will be a war from start to finish. We're really pushed for time, so I need to go quickly on. You've had a bit of time to reflect on Joshua Boazzi's comments. Mm. You've come out with uh, the Zone's new, new sky deal and stuff like that. I can see a grin on your face already when I say that. But talk me through the comments, and do you think, realistically, it's a better move for him to go to boxer? Um, I think, yeah. It, look, if... if, if Joshua Boazzi just wants to be a UK fighter and doesn't want any exposure worldwide and doesn't want to fight Dimitri Bivol and those big fights, I think it's a good move for him because he can fight Dan Aziz, he can you know, have regular dates in Birmingham and you know these other places, but we've just got bigger ambitions than that. You know, I feel like Joshua Boazzi is a, a very talented fighter. We didn't quite ever get the momentum with activity that I wanted because it's another story. But when he won the British, when he won the European... When he beat Belotniks and when he beat Richards and he got to number one in the world, we managed to come up with a deal for him to fight Dimitri Bivol in the Middle East on neutral ground for not just a million pounds, 1.25 million pounds. His argument yeah, to that, I'll, though. I'll come to that and I'll address it. Because let me tell you one thing now, and this is what people do not understand, because some of the comments are unreal. That was his last fight with us on the deal, I believe, or, or one fight. So we wanted to extend that fight by a further, I believe, three fights. See? Now, do you think 
that anyone in their right mind is going to invest in the career of a fighter, spend all that money, get him to number one in the world, pay him an absolute fortune to fight Dimitri Bivol, and then not extend the deal? That's, it's, it's the most natural industry standard procedure that is out there. And by the way, he would have had to have a rematch clause with Dimitri Bivol. So he had to extend that deal anyway. But it's not like, you know, he, he makes out that, oh, the offer was so bad and, and they wanted more fights. No, you were going to make a fortune. We gave you it on a plate to fight Dimitri Bivol, but he wasn't ready. He didn't think he could win. Virgil Hunter didn't think he could win. There's nothing wrong with not taking a fight. I, I can never criticise a fighter for that. But... He doesn't want to fight. You know, he, we lost the first bid to fight Jean Pascal. It was a lot of money, actually. Frank Warren won it. I think he was getting 600 grand, and he, he didn't want to fight Jean Pascal. Of course, the Varda conversations. And then recently, Frank Warren made him a, a, a proposal to fight Anthony Yard. And then after that, myself and George Warren were working on Boatsy against Yard. So, this is not... Yeah, when I listen to fighters like Joshua Boatsy sit out there at a press conference and say stuff like that, all it is is someone in his ear. You need to say this, you need to do that. Joshua Boatsy's fought his whole career on Sky, other than two fights. He ain't going nowhere new. He's experienced it all. But anyway, look, I, I was disappointed with the comments because I've always had a great relationship. I feel like, again, we've done a great job for him, but it's okay. You know. Is that the door closed on the future? If he ever was to come back to matchroom, would the doors be open for him? I don't, look, who knows what the future holds, you know. There's a lot of things going on, um, and we'll see what happens. But, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's just boxing, where you just get people who do not have a clue putting things in people's ears. I mean, so the whole thing, all you've got to do is press 401 to watch me fight. Well, fucking hell, all you've got to do is press 429 now. You know, I mean, it's like, but that's so, like, basic, you know, and, and what do you want to be? Do you want to be a domestic fighter or do you want to be an international fighter? You know, if you want to talk about exposure, put all the worldwide global numbers together for our shows versus another promotional company shows. You know, Boxer, for example, much bigger. UK, the viewing figure numbers are bigger. But obviously that's changing now because of the zone now available on Sky, Amazon, handset, laptop, smart TV, and you know, we're, we're a great platform. We're being pushed for time. You've announced the AJ undercard for um, the 1st of April. Talk me through that undercard and talk me about how big this is for AJ. You spent some time with him this week in Dallas. What was that like? Yeah, it was great. I mean, look, he's, he's worked so hard out there in camp. I'm nervous because I just feel like... You, it's a bit like sit talking to Chantel up there. You see, all of a sudden, they're going to train twice as hard. They want this more than ever any fight. And you look at Jermaine Franklin, he looks like a new man. He looks like he's done about 30 pounds. He's, he's absolutely flying in camp. That's what you get. They step up. And AJ must win this fight. And I believe he wins this fight, but I don't think it's going to be easy. All the pressure is on him in this fight. And, and that's, that's nerve-wracking. Um, the undercard, you know, Fabio Ward, he's got a really good fight against Coffey, you know, who was, who was regarded as a, a top prospect coming through in the American heavyweight scene as well. Felix Cash going for the European title against Signani. And also Ammo Williams will be in his face all week now fighting Riverbent, which is a great opportunity for him. Uh, Campbell Hatton as well on that card. Um, what else have I missed? Uh, lots of others. Um, and yeah, looking forward to it. But it's, it's Anthony Joshua. Uh, like that, we're, uh, we're really pushed for time so I want to move on to the next one yeah. I know but your yeah. guys in the background here telling me I need to hurry up so I don't want to miss out on these questions right Dimitri Bivol in the US where's that going to land you said June 17th with Berlanga the week after mm. the 24th in the Hulu Theatre is that correct yeah we're looking at I think we've got June 3rd June June 10 will be in the UK will be if, if, if Ammo and Felix win next week they'll fight each other June 10 um, it's June 3 June 17 June 24 there'll be two shows on those three dates Dimitri Bivol uh, looking at opponents for him now. Look, we'd love it to be Joshua Boatsy if they want to open that, that conversation again. Callum Smith's obviously fighting better BF. Um, and then Dimitri Bivol, who, which we're going for opponents right now for him. We want a good name. We want someone in the top 15 in the world if we can. And, and I think it's important for him to make a statement. Pack Ben, where are we at with that? Is it nearly done? I've seen some suggestions that it was close. Uh, I mean, I think we could sign the fight now. But... You know, there's other options, and um, I, I want the Chris Eubank fight. I do because they're going at it non-stop to each other right now. And do you think that could happen next? Yeah. I, what? What? If you're Chris Eubank Jr., why would you not want to take considerably more money to fight Conor Ben over Liam Smith, who just just beat you? I mean, but listen, we'll see. Um, La last one, Fury. Is it, is it going to happen or is it not going to happen? I saw Frank Warren didn't he tweet yesterday saying big news. Maybe. maybe. I mean, I don't know. I, I you know, 
I only hear slightly more advanced stuff that you hear, which is I heard they sent some contracts which weren't great. But I'm sure, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I get, like, from a common sense perspective, I'd say no, but common sense doesn't really apply to Tyson Fury. So he's proved me wrong before. I'd, I really hope it happens. Close me out with your best Irish impression. You've done me good a few times, so go on. How you doing there, Ed Con? You okay there? Get ready, May 20th. Biggest event in Irish sport in history. Katie Taylor, undisputed 135 pound champion against Chantal Cameron, undisputed 140 pound champion. It's a great night for Irish sport, live on the zone around the world from the Tree Arena here in Dublin. Whatever you do, don't fucking miss it, baby. I don't think that's my impression. I think that's more Conor McGregor. Yeah, well, we'll on, that, yeah. Eddie O'Hearn signing out. See you later. Thanks for a minute. Refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, up Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 